Hello, I'm Teresa from space.com. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? I will be on the flight tomorrow and I'm quite nervous about the whole thing. No, it's absolutely no problem. It's great pleasure. Please uh, have a seat, Teresa. Careful with your head. So I'm uh, Eric Delsal. I will be the captain for the flight tomorrow. And I'm checking that the aircraft is uh, all equipped to be ready for tomorrow morning. Wonderful. So mm. can you tell me a little bit what's going to happen tomorrow? Where are we going to fly and what are we going to do? Okay, so uh, tomorrow we will fly uh, abroad, uh, up abroad uh, uh, near the, the coast here, the Atlantic coast, uh, far, far from uh, Bordeaux on, on the Atlantic. Uh, so there is not too much traffic uh, in the, the altitude that we are flying between flight level 200 and 300. So it, will be, it is quite comfortable. And if we need more space, we go a little far to Brittany. Uh, over the Atlantic. We will be flying uh, flights that simulate lunar and Martian gravity. Is that true? Um, yes, it will not be a simulation. It will be a real uh, um, apparent gravity that we have on Moon or uh, on Mars. How do you do that? Uh, we'll fly the, this aircraft in such a way uh, like the aircraft is, is falling down, but not too much to keep just the gravity we need. Uh, I mean 0.16 G for moon gravity or 0.38 G for March. So what makes a difference between a parabola that gives you the lunar gravity and the Martian gravity or no gravity at all? Uh, it's just a matter of how much we push uh, on the stick. Uh, I will begin with the zero. It will be more simple. And we try to, uh, to have the um, the zero gravity uh, faces uh, as long as possible. So if I give you a ball and please throw it in such a way it will stay as long as possible in the air. So you will throw it up and then from the time you release the ball it will become to fall even if still climbing at, at the beginning. Yeah? Understand? And then we have the zero. For for uh, 0 0.16, we just push, then, then so the, then the aircraft will uh, we, will pull up uh, first, and then when we reach a given altitude, we push on the stick so that the aircraft will do that, as if it was falling down in the, in the vacuum. That is for the zero, and for to keep uh, lunar, it will be a little less chop and much uh, even less. And we just push a little less to keep uh, some gravity. How difficult it is to fly such flights. I have actually heard that there will be four pilots on board the flight tomorrow. And I believe that on that EasyJet flight that, that flight that I arrived on, there are only two. So that's twice as many pilots on a normal, as on a normal flight. Why is that? <laughs> You're right. Uh, so so on the, we, we fly this, this aircraft uh, with a very unusual way. On uh, normal, normal aircraft flying, uh, flying for airline, you are right. There are two pilots, and they share the four activities. One, we have to fly, we have to navigate, we have to speak with the control, and we have to monitor the systems. That's the four tasks of the crew, and we share them. But normally, there is only one flying the aircraft and having the hands on the controls to be very accurate for this maneuver because you asked me if it was difficult. Well, it's like every flight, but the difficulty is to be very accurate. And that's, that's our objective. So we share the three axes on the aircraft between the three pilots. So one is flying the pitch and it is the making the, the zero G or the moon or March gravity. And we use this kind of thing here that we put here like that. I plug that to have the radio. And then so from now on this pilot can only act on the pitch and I cannot do that with that. You see this one you can do both pitch and roll and with this one I can only use pitch. And during that time, the other pilot will use a very 
technical equipment, these two things here. And it can act on the roll without pulling or pushing. So that the two pilots are flying the aircraft at the same time. And the third pilot is acting on the throttle to act uh, on the power because as soon as everybody is flying uh, in the cabin, if you have a little acceleration lateral on longitudinal, we will find everybody in the cockpit or in the aft toilet that we don't, uh, we don't need. So, so that's three, what about the fourth one? And the fourth one is a spare one because uh, it's uh, very, uh, well, it's quite difficult to do. And it's very nervous, uh, nervous uh, activity. And we try to be very accurate and we fly all manually and we even disconnect some, uh, some device to help the, the pilots. So uh, we are turning and uh, there are only one relaxing in the cabin, uh, speaking with, uh, with the experimenters to see how it works. Uh, and uh, each, uh, we, we are turning the, the, during Taking the turns. Yes, yeah. How does one become a parabolic flight uh, pilot? Or can any pilot that is flying around Europe do that? Do you need special training? Well, not uh, any. We are all, uh, at the beginning, uh, very experimented pilots, either test pilots or uh, military uh, uh, transfer pilots. And then we, we from some, some of them uh, selected, we do a specific training, uh, simulator, a theory the first, simulator, and, and then flights to train this specific uh, maneuver. How many people in Europe can do that? Fly uh, we are eight, eight pilots. In Europe? Yes.